Hey everybody, it's Todd. So, hey, it's my first YouTube video that I uh, actually am going to try to put out there maybe. Um, got a bunch of stuff going through my head, some things that I like, hobbies and so on and so forth. So, uh, you know, this is my kind of first crack at it. So take it for what it's worth. If it never makes it to YouTube, then somebody finds my phone. <laughs> Enjoy the video. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, so basically today what I want to talk about is uh, some old speakers that I'm going to try to make mm, better, let's say. Um, I don't even know if they're not good now. I'm assuming that they are crap, but uh, I haven't actually hooked them up to listen to them. Um, yeah, I've been a speaker nut for, for decades and I love messing with speakers, so this is just one of those things. Uh, Maybe you out there, you think about it, hey, should I get an old set of cabinets and maybe try to put some new drivers in it? Uh, you know, I really want to experiment with crossovers or, you know, something like that. Uh, this is going to be a pretty basic video, <laughs> so don't look for anything technical, just uh, basic information. All right, so let's get started. Um, this whole thing kind of uh, came up because uh, I have been gradually building up a home theater system uh i'm a big fan of the energy product so i have a ton of energy speakers um that being said uh i grew up listening to sound dynamics uh kef um you know those were jbls those were some of the uh the main things that i uh would listen to growing up and i think that uh, i think a lot of us probably have kind of romantic mm, let's just call it a sentiment for whatever that sound was that made us so happy back then. And at the time, hey, like my, you know, Sound Dynamics 12S, man, I hooked up to a Harman Kardon PM660 amp. I'm just telling you, man, <laughs> to this day, I think, man, that system pounded. Uh, you know, it really sounded good. So I think that it, honestly, in my brain, that's the way I remember it. Now, uh, you know, go, Fast forward a few decades and, you know, like I tried messing with some uh, sound dynamics, uh, I think they were 10 S's or something like that here recently. And um, they weren't the, they weren't the S series. No, they were for you, for you sound dynamic fans out there. They were actually the next one, the next evolution of it, the pro, I think they called it uh, monitors or something like that. So they were the 10 monitor. Long story short is that it, the tweeter was so revealing that horn style uh, I think it was a phenolic dome tweeter, very detailed, very, you know, clear, clear, crisp. Um, but man, every once in a while, I would just hit on some notes that would make your ears bleed. I don't remember that when I was a kid, right? I, I mean, maybe my hearing was better. Uh, I don't know. Maybe being brand new, they were better. I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, with those ones there, when I bought them, I got them for cheap. They're used, obviously. Somebody had uh, taken a, I don't even know if they, they might have been the original 10 inch woofers that came with those speakers. And uh, I'm sure they re uh, put a new surround on them because it's black instead of orange. Long story short, I tinkered with these things. I had actually bought two sets, one on uh, eBay unloaded, another one all put together and uh, messed with them and tweaked the crossovers and uh, nothing fancy with the crossovers, but uh, basically just buying some components, some air, air conductors and, you know, uh, poly caps and things like that. Uh, yeah, got a couple of, a couple pairs of cheap MTM woofers and you guys have probably heard those, uh, heard of those anyway, seen them advertised and everything, Ch cheap, cheap, cheap Chinese speakers. And you know what? They just didn't sound all that good. No. Uh, I much prefer my Energy RC series, which uh, is older too, but you know what? Maybe I'll show it to you. Uh, I know it's working good for me. All right, long story short, with the speakers here, um, these are a Jensen CS315. Uh, I'll try to edit this video, do the best I can, and uh, you know, show you some close-ups and whatnot. Maybe before I cut off this video, I'll grab the camera and show you some stuff. But yeah, Jensen CS315, this is a 15-inch uh, three-way speaker. Um, how old it is, no idea. I would probably venture to say 25, 30 years ago, maybe longer. Uh, yeah, so basic, uh, really cheap, cheap, low-end uh, speaker, probably built with 
some general design principles that were around decades ago. Um, I've got a feeling this is probably a golden ratio uh, enclosure. I have not done the math to figure it out, but I'm assuming it was because basically this shape is what you what you got back then. You know, they, it was always a uh, rectangle, big baffle, uh, bigger drivers. Usually on the high end, you were looking at these, you know, bigger 15 inch drivers and then 12 inch drivers and so on and so forth. So, um, you know, that being said, we talk a lot about, uh, well, displacement, right? There's no replacement for displacement. I am a big, you know, I, I would promote that entirely. Like as an old timer, and maybe that's it, but I'm an old timer. Um, yeah, I don't see any way to replace big drivers. Uh, they pump out a lot of sound. Uh, so I know that you can make smaller speakers that have that are quite impressive, dynamic, deep bass, etc. I mean, my Energy RC series is a perfect example of that. Um, these things do not have enormous drivers in them, but they're well designed, well built for that era. And, uh, you know, for their price range, they pretty much kick ass. Uh, whether they would not, whether they would keep up with a big driver system, though, I don't know. Kind of depends on that system. Would it knock these things out of the park? I would venture to say yes. It would, my my RC70 towers would probably absolutely crush these 15-inch, uh, you know, Jensen CS315s because these things are cheap. I mean, you hear that? This is literally a 3-8-inch cabinet, 3-8-inch thick. Uh, just looks like, um, you know, it's I guess it's MDF, but it's on the light side. <laughs> you know, not quite flake board, but it's close to it. Uh, front baffle is a half inch thick, so they got a little bit uh, more creative with that. Um, the back, though, man, I'm feeling it right now. I'd have to guess the back of this is probably a quarter inch thick, maybe. Uh, maybe it's three eighths, but uh, it feels more like a uh, like a quarter. Um, yeah, drivers that came in these things. Oh, well, let me show you the beautiful uh, crossover first of all. Um, yeah, just a bunch. <laughs> bunch of wires all tied into the uh, into the uh, positive and negative and then they've got an electrolytic cap on it so uh, they've got a, a little bit bigger one there for the mid-range yeah that's the mid-range one uh, the mid-range and then the tweeter um, yeah uh, the woofer just got driven directly so that's pretty hilarious uh, yeah, they're, I mean, I'm sure that in a catalog, uh, you know, a Sears catalog or something, they probably looked wonderful. Um, the drivers in them, you got the 15 inch woofer, right? And honestly, this thing is still like new. I'm gonna come a little closer to the camera just to show you the, the condition of these speakers. I got them for like, um, well, Got them for a hundred bucks, no, 80 bucks. Um, so yeah, I don't know if I told my wife though, honey, if you're, if you're ever gonna watch this, forgive me. You remember when I bought these? I don't know if I told you how much I paid for them, 80 bucks. Sorry. Uh, so yeah, getting back to this woofer though. This is a 15 inch woofer for sure. It's actually designed, you know, just generally here. I'm not. I'm not uh, a sound engineer or anything like that. Man, this thing is clean. I mean, it's like brand new. Uh, yeah, so this is kind of like a giant full range speaker. Uh, probably their intention was to uh, put out as much SPL as possible, uh, not running through any type of a crossover network to a woofer. It's gonna give you the, you know, that's, like that's how Sound Dynamics did it on those old 15s's and 12s's and 10s's and stuff. I mean, they just they just let it run full throttle, so you get a lot of punchy, punchy sound to it. How it would do on a frequency graph, despite what those things said back then, um, I don't know, crazy, like 20, 27,000 to 20,000 hertz plus minus 5 dB or something. I, I got a. I would venture to say if you actually did a frequency response on those speakers, it would probably have spikes and stuff like you wouldn't believe. But anyway, yeah, that was one one uh, 
you know, easy way to get some big SPL is put a large speaker into a large cabinet. Uh, based on some measurements, uh, internal volume, I'm thinking is in about the 3.25 cubic foot range on these guys. Um, depending on which which uh, calculator I use, or I don't know how they have these things programmed online. Everybody's used those free uh, crossover calculators and speaker cabinet calculators and stuff. Uh, so anyway, this one measures between 3.39 cubic feet and 3.25, depending on which software I use. So I'm guessing about three and a quarter. Uh, I'd probably measure it out, you know, at some point just to be accurate with it. Long story short, why I wanted a 15 inch three way system. Okay, we got to back up a little bit. Talking, um, oh, 2000 and mm, 2006 ish, 2004 maybe? No, maybe before then. Yeah, it was about uh, around 2000, uh, 2002, 2004. Long story short, um, started a little speaker business. Um, I thought it was a speaker business. I was actually more of a website designer, uh, website builder. Let me correct that. I'm not an HTML coder. Um, but yeah, so anyway, I got, uh, got going with some speaker building. Uh, had some really uh, big uh, plans for it. Essentially, what I wanted to do was bring high quality sound to a more mm, recreational uh, atmosphere. This is why, okay? Go to a wedding, especially back then, man, it sounded like absolute crap, right? DJ blaring these big ass speakers that have these horns that just, you know, fry your ears and yeah, terrible sound, right? <laughs> Uh, tinny, uh, you know, almost no low bottom end or anything. Um, yeah, the commercial sound systems, uh, especially, you know, 30 years ago, but even now, a lot of times, uh, how many of you have been to a wedding or been to a bar or whatever? And even with today's technologies and all of the materials that we have and all the, all the knowledge that's been gained over the years by professional speaker manufacturers, you still wind up with a cat, you know, basically a speaker cabinet they're trying to make money on god bless them they, that's why they're making them right but you know you hook them up and it's just man it's it's not like sitting in your home listening to something that sounds really good right so that was the whole goal now the problem with that the problem with that is speaker design in general so this is like a general purpose home speaker right uh then you've got your your po your pro drivers okay which are much more dramatic and uh, actually, give me two seconds and I'll go grab one. Yeah, you can probably hear that crunching stuff, right? Me open up a box. Yeah, baby. All right, here I am wrapping that. So, tell I'm flying by the seat of my pants on this video. <laughs> Definitely not a script on this. All right, so these are some pro, pro drivers, okay? I've got a tweeter around here somewhere, too, that I could show you. But, so the difference is, okay, uh, motor structure, right? This is a little 8-inch. Look at the motor structure on this thing, right? I mean, wow. You know, a home speaker, I know that the pictures, you know, you look at the pictures with this, these home speakers, you know, if you're going to build your own, yours look for woofer, you know, the magnet size, right? I'm telling you, I think that they, the designers of speakers, and again, I'm not a sound engineer, so I couldn't tell you 100% positive, but it seems to me that the more speaker cabinets I open up, you know, professionally built ones, your more full range drivers, full, more kind of like a, a base, mid-base speakers, um, uh, mid-range speakers for sure uh, and even the tweeters right they'll have moderately sized motor structures in other words the motor is the magnet it's got the coil inside it's got the bobbin uh, and you know electrically when you get your signals on these terminals it's gonna 
move the cone in and out, right? So home speakers generally have a, a pattern, a cone design for more of a kind of a radiated close uh, dispersion, uh, wide dispersion in a small space. Let's put it that way. So anyway, and I might somebody put in the comments down below my the technical reason for that. But yeah, um, a lot of times a home speaker shaped like so and it's for smaller spaces and wide dispersion right the motors i believe in my opinion are smaller for better control they don't i know that sounds backwards but hey what do you really need a motor structure like this for in a home speaker <laughs> i mean all right so difference in rating um yeah this driver uh probably i'd say on the high side 60 watts or so Maybe, maybe it would handle 60 watts. You know, most home theater receivers are between, what, 60 to 100. Uh, and, you know, despite those crazy numbers they put on their consumer product boxes, you know, uh, 885 watts and 1150 watts and so on and so forth. And when it boils right down to it, you can look these things up online. But, uh, yeah, the, most of your home stuff, uh, basic run-of-the-mill consumer receivers and whatnot, you're probably going to be putting out 60 watts or so give or take when you're just moderately listening or listening to it kind of loud so a driver like this is much more beneficial right it takes less power to move it and your lower uh, listening levels are going to sound better right so the concept I had was to bring that so that sound that you hear in your living room with your nice home speakers to a bigger environment, like a wedding hall, like uh, like a small uh, club, uh, like uh, you know any place a DJ might play, right, um, or a band. That was my thought, you know. So figure up to about twenty five hundred square feet, maybe uh, twenty five hundred to four thousand square feet. That was my goal, and I wanted audiophile grade sound, uh, or as close to it as I could possibly get, given the design. And I wanted it to reach high SPL. So um, when I was uh, doing those speakers, uh, best results I got, I had a, say a, tw I wanna say 2,500, but it's probably closer to 2,000 square foot area, uh, old Quonset hut. Um, that I had kind of a round dome to it, about 20 foot high ceiling that came down, round almost to the ground. Um, had an office built into it, which kind of cut into the space, but uh, I had it uh, decked out I had, um, for acoustics, let's say. Um, I did have some shelving units here and there, like diffracting things. I had uh, patches of uh, carpet that were stapled all across, as high as I could get them in this Quonset hut thing. So it actually sounded pretty damn good in there. Uh, not uh, dead uh, silent, but um, not very reverberative either, if, if that's a word. It didn't, you didn't hear any echoes or anything like that. So it was a good spot to test speakers. So best results I got was, I wanna say a frequency range of about 17,000 to maybe, hmm, probably about 27 to 29. Uh, on the low end and that was over in, in that entire space and within the first 25 feet I measured I could get a, about 129 dB uh, further out about 50 feet that dropped considerably to about 110 you know somewhere in that area um, and then as you got further away say to the edge of the wall or something you might be hitting the 90 ish range which actually is pretty good for that kind of a setting like a, a banquet a wedding um some type of uh, awards event or whatever the case is you know where you know those people who like the sound they're going to be up front they're going to be dancing and everything else and then people further away they'd like to talk and then with the added benefit of the fact that we're using high quality speakers right it's not going to have that blaring you know piercing sound that you can't even talk over so when i think about pa speakers especially the older ones right they're designed to project sound far like i used to coach youth football right i mean yeah you want to go across the football field you want pa speakers 
So what's the difference? All right. So a PA speaker, by contrast, much bigger magnet, much greater power handling, right? And this is a cheap one. This is maybe a $30 Pro Woofer from Dayton. So, I mean, it's a mid-bass driver. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think this thing handles like 200 watts RMS. So if you picture this thing, you could run it even full range. You could run it, uh, you know, full range with something on the top end to brighten it up. Uh, you could run it crossed over. Uh, if you ran this thing crossed over as a mid-range, holy cow, you could have probably a thousand watt per channel system, you know, when you combine it with a woofer of equal, you know, mass and size, uh, equal or greater, and a nice tweeter, yeah. So, but yeah, the cones on these are paper. I love them. They're so stiff. That surround that folded cloth surround. These things are tight. I mean, these these are really tight. So, you know, and they're, they are high sensitivity speaker too. So the focus is on really moving a lot of sound waves far with these speakers. And to do that, you need the pressure and you need the power right so that's what these are made for do they sound great in home audio mm, arguably and i say arguably because part of my thinking behind this plan is to incorporate a miniature and let me get this vacuum out of this so I can kill myself um basically a miniature version of the pro woofer this is a Pro Series, really cheap, like $25 uh, Pro Series mid-bass driver from Dayton. Little guy, again, designed the same way as the bigger one I showed you. Enormous motor structure. Power rating on these, uh, I'd have to check it up, check up on it, but I'm guessing it's got a, probably in the 100 range, you know, maybe 100 watts max, 80 to 100 max. Um, five inch driver. And it's it's a solid little thing. And it's got a decent frequency range from, if I recall correctly in the graph, it had a pretty smooth response from about, ooh, I think it's from about, say, 4,000, 3,500, uh, down to roughly 100, let's say. So it goes pretty low and it gets pretty high. That doesn't sound like a lot on the high end, but believe me, play some test tones. Play a test tone of 4,000 hertz and tell me what that sounds like. It's more like, ee, right? It's not like you'd think like a lot of, you know, lower like voice or something would come from it. Maybe remnants of it, the high end aspect of it would. Uh, yeah, so anyway, that's the idea. Put this guy in this cabinet. Okay. Now the old mid-range speaker for this and again going back to you know regular old home design especially the cheaper ones uh sealed back mid-range um just straight up steel right tiny little magnet little paper cone folded but you notice it's kind of similar right the paper cone folded surround just not quite as beefy um but even this, this is like brand new. I mean, unbelievable. I don't know what who had these speakers, but I don't think that they used them very much because they are like, other than being dusty and having I don't know, cat hair or something on them, they're, they're super clean, man. So, yeah, so my thought process is to replace this driver with this little beast, okay? In order to do that, this is down the road. I'd like to hear these things actually the way... Jensen designed them, but um, yeah, so I've got this, and what I'm going to do for cabinet material, probably walking out of the frame here, but forgive me. All right, so one of the things you may have noticed about these speakers is maybe they are really cheesy, right? Resonance, unbelievable. Um, so crazy, crazy resonance in these guys. They've got to be braced. Um, so I did get some wood, uh, 
show you what I got. Just Home Depot. This stuff is uh, actually sold where they sell the trim. This is like trim stuff, so it's it's planed, um, which is very helpful. That way you're not dealing with you know, a bunch of warped wood or something. So this is already nice and straight and flat. These pieces are, I think, three quarter by two and a half. And then I got this piece of quarter inch thick by five and a half inch. Uh, this is poplar, by the way. You can get in, because it's trim, right? You can get in the different, um, the different types of wood. So anyway, I got poplar because I know it's pretty, it's not pine. It's a little better than pine. Um, it's light and not incredibly hard. So I'll be able to saw it and stuff. I, I have a uh, miter box saw I'm going to use for that. So thought process being, my little mid base driver that I showed you needs about point, oh, what is it, point oh, 0.07 to 0.09, 0.07 I believe is what they recommend for a sealed cabinet, 0.07 cubic feet. That's small, right? And it's not a whole lot bigger for vented, but it's not that small. So with these pieces, what I can do is make my own little cabinet, okay? And what I'm going to do, kind of dual purpose, is I'm going to build that into this area here. So it's going to serve two, pur two purposes. It's going to stop a lot of resonance on the sides and on the front panel while giving me a sealed space for the mid-range. Uh, so picture this thing inside the cabinet, cut the length obviously. Like so. Okay? So inside the cabinet. All I really need is a little hole in the back for the wires. Inside will be insulation. I'll show you that in a minute. Again, low budget insulation. Um, got a bunch of sticks like this out in the garage and a couple of these. So maybe 10 bucks in wood. And that's at today's prices. So anyway, that's what I'm going to do for a little cabinet. And for bracing it, what I'm going to do, these same poplar pieces, uh, I plan on attacking it from a few different angles. Um, I want to eventually, well, I don't know, you're probably going to see this in the videos at some point, whether I do, whether I slap these bad boys together with, and I'm going to, I got to put these cheap things together just to hear what they sound like, got to. The few old reviews I've seen online, they, um, they call them boomy, so uh, I can imagine so, probably boomy and peaky and yeah, probably all over the place. Um, all right, so long story short here, I'm trying to wrap this up for you. So this, this wood, I got a bunch of sticks, got a miter box saw. So I'm going to try to find strategic places within the cabinet to brace the cabinet. And now I can just be as simple as, say, running one from the front to the back, like that, cutting it off right below that little mid-woofer enclosure I'm going to make, which is exactly how they did it back in the 80s. Like, literally, like every speaker you saw like this would have one of these, or most speakers did, right? Um, so it would have one right inside of there, just kind of right between the... The woofer and the tweeter are right be, it was a three-way between the woofer and the mid-range because that's a really sensitive area smack dab in the middle you know your driver woofer driver is usually going to be somewhere in this area so you got this little web of material horrible so yeah probably for for sure even what i'm going to do now i'm going to run one to the back like that then the other thing you'll see is going from side to side so somewhere, not smack dab in the middle, and you know, centered on either way, but maybe more like, so picture on the side, I've already got this one going across something like 
it'll be in here, right? Okay, so that's gonna help on the back a little bit. And then for this resonance on the side, which is the longest portion of the speaker cabinet, and aside from probably the back, the sides is probably the most important. Why? Thinner. The baffle is holding all the drivers. It's pretty, it's going to be weighted down already. Um, and then with a little brace, it's going to be pretty solid, so I'm not too worried about that. But I don't want to be right in the middle. I think that the smaller the area, okay, the higher the resonance becomes, which because M MDF, you know, is it deadens okay it's a it's a deadening material so even at low bot at low frequencies like whooper right it's gonna it's gonna start to vibrate even if you can't see it or feel it it'll vibrate and cause it some sound it's called resonance kind of like a guitar uh, would right so by tightening it up now you're taking that res resonance and moving it up in the frequency range so let's say you have that little piece in there, right? If you braced it right there, that little section would have like no resonance. It's still thin wood or thin MDF, but it's, it's resonance is gonna be so high, high on the frequency scale that you won't hear it because of the properties of the MDF, okay? Because it, it just doesn't, high frequencies don't really affect it too much. So anyway, uh, so yeah. I'm going to strategically brace this thing. I know I'm going to have probably one that's somewhere in here, probably coming right off of the center brace that I have that create like a kind of a cross inside. Okay. And then I may put some other ones maybe off center a bit down here in the woofer section, maybe one here. be back here actually just to not throw it off a little bit up here I'm probably gonna stagger at least one so uh, that's the plan anyway and I may go side to side with them I may cut kind of shapes like that and put them in there okay so that's up and coming gorilla glue for that obviously never forget your gorilla glue all right, so what got me started on this whole weird project, right? I'm going to show you. Be right back. Yeah, be back here. Grab her something. leftover speakers I have from my speaker building days. So this is the Dayton Series 2. Dayton Series 2. And you see me, you hear me kind of maybe huffing a little bit. 620 pounds. Uh, yeah, this this was a driver that uh, was sold by Parts Express um, probably 20 years ago. And ooh, I'll do the unboxing close up. And this was made, so it was under the Dayton label, made for them to their specs by Eminence, which if you have heard of speaker manufacturers, Eminence is, an, is a speaker manufacturer. Like, you know, some of the companies, Klipsch, JBL, and the rest of them, they do make their own drivers, K in-house, but then other ones they just source from a company that makes speakers. So Eminence is a company that makes speakers, they actually manufacture them. And Dayton, back in the day, they weren't as big as they are now, but they they designed, developed this big 15-inch woofer for <laughs> whatever reason, um, whatever the application was, I found it to be absolutely perfect for what I needed, which was my high-power home audio idea, right? And that is, I've been kind of hiding this from you, but... Yeah, Speaker Boy. Um, that was the name that I was selling speakers under. And this was my logo because my son at the time, he had drawn a little stick figure 
kind of looked like this. And so I thought it was so cute and simple that I decided to adopt it for my logo. Yeah, so anyway, this, this driver here, you can tell it's a whole bunch different from that Jensen driver. It's not as cone shaped. The flare of the cone is not as drastic. It's made of a much thicker material. Might not be a whole lot thicker, but it's definitely stiffer and it's coated. Okay. This has got an enormous, well, for its day and age, it had an enormous voice coil. I want to say it's a two and a half inch voice coil, maybe. Something like that. It it goes, it runs at 300 watts RMS and with a max of like 600. Um, with an, a max, I think this thing has an X max of close to 8, 10 maybe, something like that. So this was essentially, it's vented, vented pole piece. This was, um, you know, basically a pro driver uh, kind of married to a home hi-fi uh, design. Kind of a hybrid right and it it's free air resonance is uh on paper it's supposed to be about 18 hertz 15 to 18 hertz and the the sound that it puts out will go from about uh let's see i want to say 19 hertz up to about a thousand and its usable frequency range is around 20 say 25 to 29 on up to about uh mm, say five to eight hundred okay it's got a little hump it actually goes to, it's got a nice nice level at 800 hertz but right before 800 hertz it kind of has a little spike so i'm going to try to level that out with the crossover and this is a cheap build but yeah that was the whole thing I was looking for cabinets that i could repurpose these old speakers in so I was on the hunt for a 15 inch cabinet. I wanted a clean design with standard size holes so I could pretty much, you know, uh, just plug and play drivers, uh, not have to worry about trying to make a square, you know, a square speaker recess uh, or something like that. It's just flush, right? So I can, I can do anything I need to with it. Like chamfer down the edge a little bit to get that, this guy, this chubby mid-range in there. Um, this woofer happens to fit in there absolutely perfect. <clears throat> now, when I was building those speakers I mentioned, uh, that one is a much different crossover than I'm going to use in this, uh, and much different mid-range and uh, a high-frequency driver, but coupled with this driver in a, what did I use for those? Uh, I used three-quarter inch high-density uh, fiber board for those cabinets. 110 pounds each cabinet just without drivers um so no i'm sorry with the drivers 110 pounds and yeah so those things i could run them i ran each speaker with a 2500 watt uh amp so um i would say longevity of those speakers full throttle mm, i would run them for 8 10 12 hours at a time really close to a full throttle and uh no you know they, they would not burn out so wherever they are today if, if there's a few uh speaker boy speaker owners out there let me know how they're doing if they're even holding up um, but yeah they're very powerful speakers and they the it's not a subwoofer right you would think that a speaker this large would just be like you know like for home theater but it's not it's it's a tight, tight speaker that will put out the range of sound that is from your deepest bass to any voices, right? Um, it's not going to cover the full range of the voice, but it's going to get into a lot of your instruments, stringed instruments, uh, you know, trombones, trumpets, uh, male voices, uh, deep female voices, the lower end of female voices. It's going to be pumping out of this guy, okay? That's a lot of sound, a lot of sound. So that's why this is so important. That's why I'm a big, big supporter, proponent of, there's no replacement for displacement, you know? 
Yeah, we see all these fancy cabinets, right? And they got a speaker that small, except it's a woofer. And they say, oh yeah, this, uh, you know, this thing is good to 50 hertz, right? And maybe it is, you know, <laughs> I got some upstairs, little drivers, not quite that small, but you know, my energies, I'll go down to like 60 hertz and pretty deep and, you know, pretty impactful, but not impactful like a speaker like this, okay? A speaker like this, it hits you, man. You feel it. So that's the whole concept behind her. And that's why there's no replacement for displacement. As far as I can tell you, um, now maybe if you're running a line array or multiple, you know, uh, drivers to couple the base and stuff, you can, you can do a lot of neat magic with little speakers like that. But, uh, and I, I've experienced that too. But the simplest, easiest way from zero to hero is big drivers. Big drivers in a big cabinet that cover a wide frequency range that's got a fairly decent frequency response and that you can tailor to your liking or application. So these I'm gonna be using in the house. Um, I'm going to tune these so that they will be as accurate as I can make them given the quality of the cabinet and drivers. Uh, I am going to also figure these would run Mm, probably most of the time I'd be listening to them at a low to moderate volume so I do want to just make sure it's colored just a little bit so by colored I mean kind of a if you looked at a frequency response right you got um, you know 20,000 to 20 Hertz uh, plus minus 3 DB or plus minus 5 DB okay that's great if you're sitting in front of a, a desk with speaker monitors here and you're actually creating music or sound effects or something right you need that all right um, if you take a completely flat studio monitor and try to enjoy it across a wide range of source material um, CDs different types of music genres uh, you know movies television etc that flatness um, yeah it's cool because it's exactly what they intended you know what they recorded but on the downside it's gonna sound a little flat a little thin um, so a lot of times speaker companies they'll put a little flair to them um, the the speakers that I had mentioned that I was building <clears throat> back in the day with these drivers um, I had was working them out to have about a 40 Hertz punch so really really at that level where most of your hard-hitting low bases that's where I wanted those to perform the best in and they did um, this one here, I don't really necessarily need that. I need to go a little bit lower into the 30 hertz range uh, with a roll off that gives me some of the rumbly stuff. High end should be just a little bright, but still smooth, right? Mid range should just fill in the gap um, at a decent level. But see, mid ranges will have a tendency to always sound a little bit louder. Don't ask me why. You could choose a speaker that has a lower sensitivity you can you know if you're running it through a three-way crossover and you don't reverse the polarity you can wind up having a actual technical on paper a dip but I think it's because the human voice and the, the instruments and things like that that we will hear in the majority of source material whether it be music or movies or tv um is falling in that range right so so you're getting a greater concentration of it and i noticed that in my energy rc70s actually um which that is almost a completely full frequency speaker full, uh, full range speaker because it goes down to like 31 hertz and up to i don't know 23,000 or something so it covers a good range uh and of course energy's design engineers and stuff i mean <laughs> for a commercial product that thing was really well designed and uh so they've got it tailored so it's it's immersive it's transparent it's flat uh but you know you even with those speakers i do notice that the majority of the sound is coming more in the mid-range right you'll still get your bass kick and your kind of high airy sounds but 
most of the time it's operating in that middle frequency. So it's really important, again, to get this guy right and that guy right. Anyway, that's about it for now. Um, being that I am not a uh, YouTube uh, a YouTube uh, sponsored guy making money yet, um, I don't have nearly enough subscribers or anything like that, so this is all for just entertainment, um, not money. And yeah, so uh, I think they have a, a limit on what each upload can be. So I have a feeling I, if, if I continue this video, it's gonna be broken up into kind of parts uh, within a series. So um, this was my introduction and show you what's going on and uh yeah i'm gonna get back at you uh with the next step maybe some close-ups of these uh of these components and the cabinets and get into a little bit more detail is and also the how-to part of it you know how to how to find some decent old speakers that you can pick up cheap that are easy to work on and then once you get them you know they're 30 40 maybe some 20 years old whatever but some of them need a little bit of TLC so I'm going to kind of show you that too I got real lucky with these uh, grills are still in decent shape but they are cheap man these things right now that thing would vibrate against here it's uh it's not gonna be it's not gonna be like 30 34 inches 33 inches of, Oh yeah, that's gonna sound loud when you know that's something I gotta fix. So anyway, yeah. Thanks for watching. If you did watch, um, if this never made it to YouTube, hey, uh, I gave it a whirl, right? But uh, if it does, and you're watching this thing, um, hey, like everybody else says, give me a thumbs up, give me a like. Uh, with this speaker build here, like I said, I plan on making it an actual kind of a series, a mini series. So. Um, subscribe so that you know when the next video comes out so you'll see the next progression in it so got a few ideas of that right now um, probably gonna go through uh, just a quick cleanup kind of show my uh, you know show you uh, how to take an old set of speakers and just kind of you know make sure that they're working right make sure that they're clean and see how they sound right I'll do that I can do that easy enough uh, then I'll take it to the next level starting to hey how do we make it sound better right these don't have a crossover what do they sound like with a crossover um they don't have insulation what do they, they didn't come with any insulation so that's something i forgot to tell you hilarious um so yeah i'm going to show you what i'm going to use for insulation too cheap hack um yeah so we'll go through the whole thing and eventually by the time it's done we should have a fully functional uh kick-ass set of old three-way speakers that pound. Thank you.